Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a fantastic program, the startup sports and fitness startups changing the game. We're live right now with the fabulous speakers. Amongst us, we have with us uh, Inigo Bonilla, who is the head of strategic alliances from um, Global Sports Innovation Center, supported by Microsoft. We have Ron uh, J. Singhai, who's an investment specialist with Invest India. We have Ajay Pratap Singh, CEO of Sports Kira. Jitin Pichoski, who is the founder and CEO of Fitter, and myself, the moderator of this session, who's going to try and keep it live as much as we can. I'm the CEO of Sports Grid. So we're going to get started. We have a fantastic session ahead, and we hope that you'll all enjoy this program. If you have any questions, go ahead and post those questions, and we hope to answer them as much as we can. And we are hoping these startups who are joining us in this particular session would benefit out of this uh, out of this and uh, possibly gain some experience and possibly learn something from the wonderful panelists who are here today. So as we get started, let me, let me just give you a brief, uh, you know, if you look at the sports and fitness ecosystem, it has gained a lot of popularity in the last five years, if I'm not mistaken, this sector has undergone a tremendous change. Uh, there are a lot of startups that are getting funded in this particular sector as well. Uh, there are a lot of new clubs that are getting created. There are a lot of sponsorship activity besides cricket that is also happening in this in this sector. Uh, there is a whole bunch of stuff which was not happening five years before is now happening in the sector. And we hope to learn a lot more from our panelists as we go along. Let me start off with asking the first question to uh, Inigo. Inigo, you must have come across many startups uh, from around the world. Just to kind of give you a brief, uh, 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 Global Sports Innovation Center is supported by Microsoft. is actually a, a membership-driven program where people can, uh, people who are innovating in the sports and fitness uh, sports sector, can come and become members of that. So he must have seen a tremendous number of startups which are coming in and becoming members of it. Uh, Inigo, I wanted to get an idea from you as to the kind of new startups that you're seeing, which are sound of, which sounds exciting and which may interest interest our audience as well. Yeah, indeed. Well, uh, over the last years, uh, we have uh, analyzed and profiled more than 1,500 companies from 80 different countries. Right now, we have an existing ecosystem of 340 companies from 40 different countries. So our expertise is identifying the best quality of solutions all over the world in terms of uh, a sports tech. So uh, in my humble opinion, I think that um, the, all the startups that are using AI has a, a tremendous uh, impact in the, in the industry. Nowadays, this is uh, one of the technologies that is generating the, the biggest impact on the industry because you can apply these kind of technologies to different sports scenarios, okay? So you can uh, apply artificial intelligence for smart venues, you can apply artificial intelligence for fan engagement, for team performance, and this uh, will allow uh, all the different sport entities to take that of the decisions and to, to achieve a, a greater success in the business. Fabulous. So uh, coming to the point of, you know, uh, AI, and I also think that there's a lot of activity having happening around the uh, AR and VR kind of a modules as well. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, are, how 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 good are these companies? And I wanted to know from our audience, from our panelists specifically, as to uh, what they see as attraction and whether AR and VR will work in India, um, the adoption, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm going to pose this question to uh, 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 the panelists right now, uh, probably starting with uh, Ajay and as well as uh, Jitendra. Um, do you think like fitness industry is ready for Jitendra, for example, uh, is is part of Fitter? Fitter is a community uh, platform for people in the fitness industry. Um, do you think that, do you think that AR and VR would work in your sector specifically, for example? Well, I mean, every idea is a good idea. It depends on execution, depends on awareness, and depends on how uh, the user acceptance happens. I think that's a little too early for uh, the Indian audience. Uh, we'll have to see how the international playbook plays out, and then probably see how the international audience is uh, embracing the technological change, and then probably if it's if it's a success there, uh, then uh, we can think that yeah, maybe it'll make some kind of an impact here. I mean, in terms of market penetration, uh, we are definitely not the leaders, so we'll have to see what happens at an international level and then how it uh, plays out in the country. Great, Ajay. In you must be you must have written a lot of articles, a lot of content around this, um, and uh, you know. Uh, do you think India is ready for AR and VR, uh, or or are we or or the companies which are starting up in India will have to focus on the international market uh, for that matter? 
I think India is definitely one of the early adopters uh, for AR or VR to whatever scale that we uh, need currently. Uh, I feel uh, AR, VR in terms of uh, ed tech, uh, in terms of healthcare, entertainment is something that uh, that we've seen AR for a uh, But I generally feel that if it comes more in terms of gaming, uh, uh, I think it would be connect faster than what we have seen till now. Uh, with the advent of uh, you know, your mobile, I mean, now we have uh, actually uh, surpassed US in terms of uh, the smartphone market uh, uh, in the world, right? So the smartphone and everything else like this, I think uh, uh, it'll be a little slow to be honest, but then once it comes into the gaming sectors and the fitness sector, I think the adoption rate is what I feel will be much faster in the end of the healthcare start. Great, great, great. Um, uh, Ranak, um, I wanted to pose uh, pose this question to you. So, uh, Ranak is part of Invest India. Invest India is a fund of funds. Um, they don't actually invest themselves, uh, but they actually invest in com- invest in the funds, and which in turn funds these startups, for that matter. Um, uh, do you is is Invest India specific to any sector, or is there? Uh, what would you like to tell us about Invest India so that the audience can benefit out of it, Ranak? Ronak, your audio is on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, sorry, Bhavi. So first of all, just would like to congratulate the team of Fiki for the 10th edition of Turf. And uh, yes, coming back to your question, so just want to clarify a little bit over there. And that's in India, so technically this section 8 not so much moment of India entry under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, under which we have two campaigns. Of course, one is the Make in India campaign, like we earlier just discussed. It is primarily focused on FDI induction into the country. So any service stakeholder looking to invest into India will sort of come to invest in India for the first point of contact. Now, the second campaign is the Startup India campaign, which is the focus of this session, uh, of this session today. Um, to sort of summarize and quickly tell you what Startup India is, it's sort of like a one-stop shop. You can call it a one-stop shop for all stakeholders of the Startup ecosystem of India. Now, what, and of course, the global Startup ecosystem as well. You have your investors, you have your mentors, you have your incubators, you have your accelerators, and you have your government bodies. So in order for them all to sort of come together and create, collaborate, and innovate, we've built this startup and we are up to sort of bridge the gap. And to answer your question, no, we are not focused on one particular sector since the government initiative. We are completely sector agnostic. But again, keeping that in mind is a second. I'm thankful for this uh, session. I personally have a very, I have a vested interest in sports. We very recently did the National Startup Awards. Uh, the Minister of Home Industry, which he had announced, uh, he'd given out awards to about 35 startups in different sectors. Sports, unfortunately, wasn't one of them. And I do, after this session, I will make sure that, you know, we do support that to be a sector in itself. We have seen a massive growth in the overall number of startups in the sports sector. As of, as of last week itself, we have, within India itself, we have about 212 recognized startups by the government of India and sports. But yes, we do cater to all different sectors. It's not just focused on one. Thank you, Ranak. Um, given that we are in the midst of a corona uh, pandemic right now, um, uh, Inigo, uh, how do you think uh, this sector is affected and uh, what do you see as the long-term implication of uh, the, this pandemic on, on this particular sector? Well, uh, of course, in in every challenge, uh, you have an opportunity. It's true that uh, this pandemic has affected the industry a lot, mostly in terms of uh, the financial situation of the sport entities. But it was an opportunity in terms of uh, digital transformation uh, because all the sport organizations were looking for solutions to achieve a better engagement with the fans or uh, new monetization models. And here the startups and the sport tech companies are playing a key role. Uh, because they are the ones that are developing those solutions. So, for example, in our experience, we've built a, a catalog of um, of solutions with different uh, partners in order to mitigate the impact of the of the this pandemic in the sport industry. So we have uh, support different sport organizations to um, implement different solutions to to face these challenges. And uh, I think uh, from now on. Uh, most of the sport entities are going to allocate more resources to the innovation area because they, they truly believe that these kind of uh, solutions will be key to succeed in the, in the market. 
Great, Ajay. Uh, Jitendra, uh, your uh, what was your what was the effect of Corona on your particular company specifically uh, in terms of growth revenues, uh, your projections, and your funding um, as as well? Uh, what was the impact of all that on your company? Well, uh, right. Uh, Ajay, right? I mean, I should be right. Uh, uh, Jitendra, sorry, sorry about okay. that. No. Sorry. Uh, so look, when when the pandemic happened, uh, you know the international sales definitely came down, and then the local sales sales went down, and the lockdown was around. Because people were in panic, they were too busy, uh, you know, focusing on things like supplies rather than focusing on something else. Uh, but as everybody eased into lockdowns, as everybody accepted the reality that these lockdowns are here, uh, people came back, and so we have been a virtual business last six years, uh, last five years. And so we didn't see any kind of dump uh, after July onwards, and currently we are talking about nine hundred thousand dollars a month, uh, which is the highest ever been. And this year we are doing percent compared to last year. Uh, so uh, being a digital organization, uh, I'd say that it didn't affect us. Great, uh, Ajay. Uh, news content is is very important uh, for you to feed information. And given that the pandemic would have brought down the amount of content uh, relatively uh, to a bare minimum, how was that affecting your organization? Uh, to be honest, I think uh, as the world was scared and going to happen uh, during this pandemic in the end of March, April, we will be seeing uh, the traffic going down pretty much. Uh, I think we were left to a 50% of the traffic. Uh, uh, but then, uh, I think, as someone said in the panels, right, uh, we, we see this more as an opportunity and pour it into multiple other uh, esports being uh, And I think a lot of people, I mean, a lot of esports people uh, in the market saying how esports have been uh, during this corona. And also, we've seen that for example, other sports, we've been live events are not happening. WWE was going on inside the closed door. A lot of traction from WWE that was running pretty fine. In terms of these, and slowly and slowly, I mean, we found ways to connect with the fans, right? I mean, we started creating a lot of one-on-one sections. Uh, called it SK Live with uh, with the with the current cricketers or uh, you know uh, past cricketers, Bollywood actors and stuff like that. Just basically uh, a mechanism where we are bringing those uh, fans of ours or sports kid or cricket and uh, to just closer to their uh, their role models, personalities and stuff like that. So I think March and April uh, to such an extent were slow. Uh, from May, June, July onwards. I think, I think great. a lot of people in their home uh, watching more digital content. Great, great. By the way, Ajay, your camera is off. In case it's possible, just switch it on if that's possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, in terms of you know, let's talk about the impact of the investor mindset. Um, Edigo, uh, what do you think? Has the investor mindset changed uh, since then, and is it changed specifically to this particular sector? Has it been in the positive or the negative side? Uh, what do you see as the long-term impact of this? You're on mute. Okay, well, uh, based on our global experience, uh, indeed, I think uh, for the investors is is very attractive, the market because the potential of growth is uh, is massive in most of the countries as they have uh, recently started the, digi the digitalization process. Most of the governments are boosting the, the entrepreneurs to develop new technologies and new products for the sport industry. So the way we are consuming sports has totally changed and the investors are investing heavily to make this project real. There are the investors' um, mindset are mainly focused on investing in technologies to give fans a better user experience and to digitalize the sports practice. So I think in, in the coming years, we will see a tremendous impact of, of, the, of the investors in, in these kind of solutions. Great. Uh, Ranak, uh, in terms of uh, the, uh, the entrepreneurs who are in this particular sector, if you had to tell them there are a lot of people who are possibly faced with a little bit of hardship 
because of this downturn that really happened. Um, what do you think? What is your advice to these people? Um, how do you think that uh, you know the government and the Invest India per se uh, can help or and or slash your advice specifically uh, on how they can still stay afloat? Possibly networking them, bringing them together. Um, is there anything that you think that they should be doing right now? Yes. So uh, just also taking a little bit from the previous question you just asked in terms of the investor perspective and about the overall ecosystem, I'm just going to mention that it's sort of in my personal and humble opinion it might be something that is very subjective because unfortunately or fortunately because of the onset of this since the onset of the coronavirus and then since the onset of this uh, COVID-19, I feel that certain sectors, if you go a little bit deeper within the macro sector and dig a little bit deeper, I feel like certain startups which uh, which are focused on something like uh, building sports infrastructure where you physically need to be present in order to actually execute or avail services provided by those startups might have taken a hit in terms of valuation or in terms of other things. But on the same hand, and taking from your first question about how technologies such as AR and VR and not even AR and VR, every, all the IR point for technologies, artificial intelligence, machine learning and stuff like that, startups which are focused on building technologies and leveraging those or sort of indulging in uh, in sports or sort of gaming or so virtually, that has sort of accelerated, I think, by maybe five to ten years as compared to how it would have without the onset of the pandemic. So I was just reading that. So just a little fun fact that India right now, actually, we have about 500 million active internet users. And the growth that some startups like a Dream 11 or something has seen, I believe they recently raised over $200 million and have touched a $2.5 billion in terms of valuation, would not have been the same case with the startup that is focused on sort of a physical presence, which requires sort of a physical presence. That would have taken a hit. So my advice would still be to every aspiring entrepreneur out there would be maybe take this time to extend your runway and focus on learning if you are in the field of something where a physical presence is required because for the foreseeable future unfortunately we're close to being however it may not be very possible to actually indulge in sports how we traditionally have been so we might have to pivot to some sort of a tech-based solution for complementing our needs for the time being so still for both sectors my advice would be i mean this is the time to actually sit back and take a deep breath and learn as much as you can and maybe in the future when things hopefully as soon as they can sort of normalize, then leverage upon that opportunity. So there are on the Startup in your Hub, if you do see, I will definitely share the details with them. It's uh, there on our website. There are lots of courses for any aspiring entrepreneur to go from a group of an idea to an enterprise. So my advice would be to take this time and learn and sort of build your knowledge base before actually going there. But yes, again, if you're in a sector where technology is being leveraged, I think this is a time where you you have a big market opportunity. Again, in a country like India, we have 1.3 billion in terms of the population. So the market size and opportunity isn't really a problem. So I would say go for it. If you're Great. Uh, Ajay, you exited uh, uh, Sports Kira got acquired by Nazira uh, some time back. And uh, if you, you know, given that current situation, what do you see as, uh, you know, the challenges and how do you think, uh, you know, entrepreneurs also uh, should be, should they be looking at consolidation? Should they be looking at uh, possibly uh, merging with other entities and so on and so forth? What are the kinds of strategies that you think that uh, startups should be adopting at this point of time? Uh, are we discussing? I mean, only sports startup is what you're talking, yes, talking about. Yes. Uh, see, uh, to be honest, we were not anyone was not expecting as to what would have. I mean, what this Corona has brought in, right? I mean, it came in as a shock, and it still remains to be in like that. A uh, lot of businesses have become, uh, you know, they they become obsolete in the sense that they don't remain that viable right now because people cannot go outside, they cannot meet people and stuff like that. So I think it depends on the startup saying that what they were offering to uh, the users, right? At that point in time, what was the challenge that they're trying to solve? 
now in due course of this what happened right now uh, we feel that this challenge does not exist uh, then then the solution that you're trying to bring in doesn't doesn't exist as well right however if you sense that uh, it is a time uh, to basically as someone said right uh, sit back a little bit think of what you were trying to do try and try to learn as to what's going to happen in the next uh, few months because i see i mean I, we've already seen that vaccines have started coming out it is uh, i think it's from, uh, 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 the european countries have started testing and stuff like that so it is basically a more time if you can uh, have that runway basically a more time to just hang in there i think we could normalize that however if you sense an opportunity saying that okay if a plus b can be let's say more than two uh, and give uh, a runway to both the companies or multiple companies that you feel that you can basically associate with i think we can explore that opportunity but you have to take my opinion uh, if you're solving a problem problem really exists i think it will still exist after uh, five months when things come to normal right Jitendra, uh, you, uh, your organization, um, in terms of, uh, you know, you you focus mostly in India right now. Uh, do you have any plans of global expansion? And uh, if so, if you were to start this particular company, do you think you would have done better in a in a in a other in any other country better than India? Or if you had to do it all over again, you know, uh, which where do you think the market lies uh, for a company like yours? You're on mute. Sorry, my bad. Uh, so just to give a clarification, you know, we are not primarily India focused. In fact, more than 30% of our customers are actually global customers. Uh, oh, great. Total uh, user base is roughly around 70% from India. Uh, having said that, you know, even if we had to do it all over, we couldn't pick any other country except for the country where we come from. Uh, that's because, look, uh, all said and done, India is a land of opportunities today. If somebody feels that there's a bigger market, bigger, bigger market uh, that exists outside, is clearly uh, know, delusional. Uh, so as of today, the biggest market in the world is India, and there's there's no better place to do business today than, than India. Uh, we would have done the same. Very nice. So that's good to know that uh, you know. Uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Inigo? Uh, which which markets do you think uh, are doing very well right now? Um, uh, you know, how do you compare it to India? Okay, uh, now I'm on mute. So uh, I think um, the, the leader in the sport and fitness industry will always be the US, okay? Uh, they have been uh, leading the industry over the last years and most of the leading sport organizations such as NBA, NFL, M MLB uh, are based uh, out of the US. But it's true that in India uh, will follow this uh, unstoppable growth of the industry and the opportunities are quite broad uh, for them because well, India, first of all, is one of the fastest growing markets in terms of a sport uh, tech industry with one of the largest population and with a strong presence of the sport industry. OK, you mentioned perfectly cricket, but also uh, India is one of the largest markets in terms of uh, soccer fans on, on a global basis. So in the next few years, the number of startups and sport tech companies in India will increase uh, significantly and uh, as well as the number of uh, sport events. Uh, uh, sometimes it's better to, to follow um and to follow the leaders in order to uh, learn from them and then you can you can succeed in the market so for sure i think uh, india is a, it will be in the next few years a global reference in terms of uh, a sport tech i've recently read uh, an article that uh, india is in the top 3 in terms of uh, investment in sport tech so i think the, the the potential of the of the market is is massive in this sense great Ajay, uh, you must be coming across audience from multiple languages, uh, coming from rural villages and so on and so forth. Um, you know, uh, multilingual content, how important is it? And uh, and how do you feel that the impact of language affects a sports startup's growth, um, in your opinion? Uh, definitely. I think uh, vernacular is something which is definitely uh, the go-to thing right now. Uh, I mean, prior to uh, working in sports speed, I was also working with uh, a new, I mean, uh, uh, Dainik Bhaskar, which is the uh, world's largest Hindi daily, right? So where we, we, we gave in a lot more Hindi content for to the users. So I think vernacular is definitely uh, on. You, you see partners like Daily Hunt doing great job with vernacular. 
uh, content. Uh, so depends what kind of business you are in. Let's say if you are into uh, website business, right, where search majorly still happens in English. Uh, I think uh, you have no option but to stick to, let's say, certain languages like in English and Hindi. But then, if you if you are more app based kind of stuff, uh, right, you you have a product which has a lot more uh, consumption in terms of app. I think vernacular is definitely the way to go. Uh, you've you've also seen a lot of OTT players, for that matter, uh, bringing in a lot of vernacular content, and that is because um, uh, there is demand for vernacular content for sure. Jitendra, in terms of uh, you know people coming to your application fitter, um, where do you how how do you see the uh, the language playing a role in that, and uh, how many people are coming from which parts of the country, and uh, and so on and so forth, if you don't mind. Right. Uh, so look, uh, roughly thirty three percent of the entire uh, paid customer base is actually coming from tier two, tier three, and tier four cities. Uh, which which establishes there's a, a deep penetration uh, beyond metro cities. Uh, that being said, we have coaches who are well versed in vernacular languages. Apart from that, we are also trying uh, uh, to uh, you know adapt the app to hyper local languages. Uh, so vernacular, like I just said, is the way to go because today customer is uh, deciding which way a company or a product is going to evolve, and it's the best idea to listen to your customers. So. Vernacular is definitely the way to go. Uh, Ranak, in your opinion, uh, what are the kinds of what are the vacuums in this particular industry that you think uh, uh, you know startups can full, fulfill at this point of time? Uh, what are the new kinds of startups that you're not seeing in the market possibly could be started right now uh, in this in this fourth space? So uh, I would have I would have said I would have taken a few names to be very honest in terms of. Uh, micro sectors uh, as you just mentioned vacuums that can possibly be voids that can be filled but i think the pandemic has turned out to be a blessing and a lot of new startups have actually come up to solve certain uh, certain problems in the sports sector that earlier were not being resolved so some just in terms of uh, in terms of what i have personally been seeing in the last year or maybe a little over that these are what we at least from the government perspective refer to as sunrise sectors so we have something as sports education we have infrastructure aggregators like sports infrastructure aggregators fantasy gaming which has really taken like really accelerated pace uh, and wearable sports technology as well. So these are gaps that I feel that maybe had you had you uh, had had we discussed this maybe two years ago or a little over that, there were these gaps that existed in the ecosystem. But fortunately, because of the pandemic, I feel that certain gaps have been filled, and the pace overall pace of of startups sprouting about have has sort of accelerated over the last year or year and a half. In your, in your opinion, uh, what are the kinds of startups you think uh, are needed right now? And uh, specifically, if you if you can tell us more about uh, worldwide, what do you see as a trend, and where do you think there are some gaps that uh, possibly as new startups can fulfill? Uh, I, as I mentioned previously, I think um, uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, all the startups that are currently developing solutions uh, for artific with artificial intelligence or machine learning are are needed in the market. Okay, because for the sport organizations, uh, makes totally sense to to implement these these solutions, okay, and make their their life easier. And then, uh, apart from that, I think all the all the startups that are working uh, in terms of business insights and analytics, okay, uh, now data is is the new gold, okay, and and most of the sport organizations and most of, most of the large companies are trying to measure the data that they are generating in order to take data driven decisions. So I think uh, here we have a, a huge opportunity for the startups to develop solutions in, in this area. And uh, apart from that, I think um, added management platforms is also uh, a, a great opportunity for the startup to start developing those solutions, okay? It's true that uh, we have a, a few names uh, of uh, uh, sport tech companies that are currently working on added management platforms. But, uh, well, we have a lot of different sport organizations in India. You know perfectly that the possibilities are massive in, in this sense. So uh, probably if the startups uh, develop solutions in terms of added management platforms to take data driven decisions regarding the, the performance of the athletes in order to uh, measure all the different uh, stats and so on for, for the athletes, it will be very helpful for the market for sure. Jitinder, in terms of uh, companies which are getting funded, 
Um, do you think that uh, VCs and investors uh, always ask for some Western validation before uh, funding an Indian company, for that matter? Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of investor mindset do you see um, in India versus the rest of the world, if you like? Well, I'd say that look, the Indian investment scenario is still not accustomed to the likes of Silicon Valley investors, where they actually see a, a legitimate idea or they don't have very heavy reliance on the TAM. They, they focus on markets which can evolve in the future. Uh, in India, signaling is uh, how primarily the investment works. Uh, also is one of the biggest problems why some of the deserving startups do not get their due. So I think the investment uh, scenario uh, itself has to evolve a lot more than what it is right now. Uh, it's 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 satisfactory to know that the trend is being followed. People are trying to replicate the Silicon Valley style of investing, uh, but it's not happening at the moment. Uh, hopefully, that will change in future. So that's 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 what I think, right? Ajay, um, since your success, I'm sure you must have seen an uptick in the number of people who possibly would have started another uh, sports news portal and so on and so forth. Um, uh, do you think that, uh, you know, it is a trend that Indians do have a, a model where uh, any success is getting replicated pretty fast? Is that, is that, do you see it as a trend or what is your opinion on that? What we definitely see is that even people uh, who are our competition, uh, I think, See, I don't know what do you call it, but if you're in content industry, I think plagiarism is one thing which will, uh, which is always there, and we are all trying to fight that out. Uh, so, uh, yes, I mean, in terms of uh, any unique original content piece that you try to do, when you see that you you're trying to do that content, uh, doing all the hardships there, and then it gets copied. Uh, that is one trend which I've seen, and I think uh, this would have existed since long, and this is stay stay for long. Um, in terms of, yes, it, it looks very easy, uh, uh, Sudhakar, in that sense, case, case saying that it is very easy uh, know, to write content and then expect people to come to that content and read that content, but it's not that very easy. Uh, depends, you'll have to understand what users want, why they want, when they want and stuff like that. And hence, you would have seen that even the cricket that has been followed right now, the shoulder content that organizations do is moving more towards the social media side of things, wherein you say, uh, you see a Virat Kohli asking Anushka Sharma, she has she had food from, from the game itself, and right? And you'll see a lot of people doing that content. So that kind of trends have uh, shifted, shifted. Uh, Generation Z needs a little different kind of content. Uh, they're more entertainment related rather than analysis oriented. Uh, but yes, I think there's an opportunity for people if they can come up with innovative ideas, if they come up with innovative uh, you know, form of content, uh, there is a larger pie for everyone. So uh, in terms of uh, the worldwide market, uh, you know, uh, do you see uh, the sports and fitness market in India uh, to grow further? And uh, you know how much, uh, how much of how much because cricket seems to have taken up much of the space at this point of time, and uh, other sports are still struggling for that matter. Um, given that situation, um, how do you think that India can change this equation? Uh, how do you think new sports clubs and uh, can come up and make themselves successful? What are the marketing ideas that you would have? Uh, if you have any thoughts on that, that'll be great. I'll go right. Yes, in, well, in, in terms of, uh, of marketing ideas, I think uh, India is, um, in the sport organizations in India are making a huge effort, okay, in terms of uh, digitalizing their business, okay. It's true that they, this process is very long, so they need to start with uh, certain solutions and then they can implement uh, deeper um, technologies. But in this sense, I think, um, well, the, the, the soccer industry is growing a lot in, in this market. Uh, well, if you see the in number of uh, funds on a global basis, India is one of the leading markets in soccer funds. I think the soccer sport, uh, the soccer entities in India are, are, are they have recently started developing different uh, initiatives about innovation and technology. They are trying to digitalize the venues and they are trying to bring new new experiences to the fans. And I think um, there are other other sports that are growing so fast in the region. Now we have uh, in in. In a few years, the well next year, the Olympic Games. So probably this is also a great opportunity for for the for the Indian uh, national associations and federations to implement different solutions and to start uh, engaging with the new audiences. 
I think um, technology and innovation is playing a key role to engage with new audiences. So my kind recommendation is for them to, to start implementing their solutions, because if not, it will be very difficult for them to engage with the younger audiences. Ajay, in terms of readership content, what do you see as a trend in terms of uh, newer sports and readership around that? Because you will have a lot of analytics as to the kind of uh, kind of content that gets read, and that could actually translate to business propositions for these kinds of sports. Um, so, what is what is it that you think as is a trend and and the marketing advice for that? I think uh, every year we tend to see uh, how is I mean, what is the competition with cricket? I mean, when you look at different sports, right? Uh, when you look at the current IPL numbers, I think that they have rocketed high. Uh, the digital consumption is growing day by day for cricket for sure, right? Uh, but then when you when you look at, and it is because, I mean, I mean, a lot of smartphone penetration, a lot of internet penetration that has happened, 4G has come, the, the rates have got cheaper and stuff like that. So people, instead of spending a lot of time, let's say, on the bigger screens, are spending a lot of time on the smaller screens for that matter. Uh, cricket, to be honest, is still uh, very, very ahead of uh, the other sports. But then, with the advent of all your super leagues, right, your your kabaddi leagues, your badminton, uh, the ISL and stuff like that. So I, we were just analyzing ISL numbers from 2015, 16 onwards, and every year we see a huge jump in terms of readership. Football is not a premium sport anymore. Saying that, okay, these are the premium bunch of people who follow football. Even if you look at, uh, you know. EPL and other other leagues also in uh, sports kira, you would find a lot of Indian audience moving towards those Western uh, sports. Even if you see the numbers for an NBA or uh, an NFL, uh, I think the numbers are on an uptick. Uh, when you compare it uh, with cricket, I don't think that should be a competition. I think uh, it has a legacy of all. Uh, I mean, uh, legacy of cricket and it'll still be there. But then there are different different type of sports uh, definitely being there. You esports for that matter, right? I mean, even if the PUBG is banned right now, I mean, I don't think there's any uh, downward trend in terms of people following other uh, esports for that matter, esports or gaming. So I think it is uh, it is I mean Generation Z who who we, who we want to cater to right now, and uh, they they follow multiple sports. I think the influence of West is still far more than what Generation X had. So I definitely see a lot of people following more international sports for that matter. Jitinder, uh, when you started the company, you started off as a WhatsApp group, if I'm not mistaken. You went on to become a very profitable company for that matter. Um, you know, uh, it was a very, very interesting to read about all that. Um, what do you think is the best marketing techniques that startups should be following or rather the best? I mean, what is the advice that you would give as marketing techniques uh, that young startups which don't have that much funding, uh, what kind of techniques do you think they should be adopting? Uh, do you think like Google AdWords and Facebook AdWords are the only way to go or is there any better ways of getting uh, getting things up and running in a much more better fashion? All right. So look, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. We started off as a WhatsApp group and bootstrapped the company for the last uh, four and a half years until we recently got funded by Sequoia Search. Uh, another interesting thing is that even today, we don't do any kind of marketing. So we are 100% organic. Uh, because the market is out there, you know, people are looking for solutions. The, the challenge is, are you offering them the right kind of solution? So if we say that India is a huge market, uh, what do we mean by that? We mean that we are a market which is ready to consume. Uh, the problem is, what are you giving them? What is, what is the product? What is the solution? So unless until you focus on the solution that's being consumed by one person, and that one person tells other 10 people that, you know, this is a nice thing. This is a good solution I'm consuming. Uh, it's never going to scale. And then there will be a lot of artificial pumping of money, acquisition of customers uh, that you can always do. But unless until your startup sees that initial, uh, you know, first few set of customers who are validating the product, uh, unless there's a product market fit, uh, there's nothing that can save cardio. So focus on the solution which people are looking at. Uh, the market is huge. There's huge opportunities. Like I said, it's it's one of the largest markets in the world today. Um, understand what are the pain points which are uh, which are uh, challenging people and fix those uh, problems. You know, if solution is good enough, people are going to talk about it. And from first initial few set of customers, you reach hundred, and then hundred become thousands. And then at that point of time, you can think about augmenting the reach by you know pumping in money when you raise funds from investors. I mean, investors are going to come in. 
and they're gonna ask you the obvious question if we put in x can you do a 10x what are you going to invest x in if you don't have a product uh, which people are not ready to buy in then it's just acquisition of customers that's inflating the valuation Thank you for that. If I can, if I can jump in for a second, I think thinking about the the commercial perspective, okay, one of the um, the best tools to to be used for by the startups is uh, LinkedIn, okay. So uh, my recommendation for all the startups is to use LinkedIn from the commercial perspective to move, to market your their solution because the the opportunities in LinkedIn are massive, okay, and and the the whole community is looking for solutions in LinkedIn. You look at the posts, and if, if some relevant people is recommending your solution, that would be very helpful for for the for the startups to commercialize their products. Thank you for that. Um, Ronak, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of these, uh, you know, Indian style, uh, you know, uh, martial arts to, um, you know, sports and everything else that is that is available in the market. Uh, do you think there is an opportunity for them to get funded in some way or form or the other uh, in the future? Do you think there are there are going to be places where uh, there is an opportunity for niche segments uh, to be funded uh, because today, if you look at it, cult fit, uh, which was, uh, I mean, I'm for lack of a better example, um, in, in the, I'm taking it from the fitness sector, but cult fit got funded by $30 million of the $500 million valuation. Um, but I think that has also got a relationship to somebody like an F45 and other companies which are in the international market. Uh, what about the local players? Uh, what do you, you know, should startups be created uh, around these local sports and local these things? And what is the kind of advice you have for them? So yes, of course, absolutely. And this is a very important point. So um, I believe about a year or two years ago, we actually carried out this initiative, um, which was referred to as the Startup India Yatra. And we went to about, we covered almost the entire country. We did about over a few hundred districts actually. And a key learning that came out of that was that, you know, it's just a personal opinion. Again, I feel that, you know, when, the Facebooks of the world were had come about and the, start, the entire startup culture had come about. We have a habit of aping the West in a way. And I sort of agree with Jitinder also. He mentioned that he mentioned that we need to focus on the pain points rather than just sort of sort of acquiring users or sort of building or creating increasing valuations and stuff like that. So local problems is a key focus that an aspiring entrepreneur should have in mind while building a startup. A pain point does not necessarily have to be on the scale of an Uber or a Facebook or something that affects the entire world. It, of course, eventually should cater to a larger market. I mean, that's the goal of every startup. I mean, accumulating profit and reaching a state of profitability. But again, in the beginning, you should always and always cater to a local problem or a local, like you mentioned, a local sport. You, you just asked that if, if a startup should be built around that. So yes, definitely, I do feel. And plus, again, I think it's been mentioned a few times over here. This is the largest market opportunity in the world in terms of just the numbers when we do speak. So I don't think scaling is really much of a concern in India. But yes, keeping that in mind, yes, definitely, I feel that local issues, local sports, should be addressed while building up the startup yes ajay in terms of uh, you know coming back to the similar point uh, but from a content perspective um, do you think there is a readership in local uh, sports content and uh, you know uh, around uh, you know whatever is happening around the local uh, you know whatever sports and fitness activities uh, the martial arts and so on and so forth do you do you think there is a readership uh, for it and uh, what is your projections for that uh Pretty difficult, right? I mean, see, you would have, everyone would have, let's say, 10, 12 hours of uh, time to work on certain things, right? And you would want to see that where do you want to focus your energies on? Is the local market in India for, in terms of content, uh, is, is something that you'd want to focus on? Or you would want to use the certain time, that the same time period to focus on international market? Uh, for us, the strategy has been international for now. Uh, we've not thought of really uh, going deep in terms of local uh, coverage of content in the market uh, for multiple reasons, right? I mean, uh, when you look at the ROI that you're generating, when you look at, even though when you look at India, you have a huge opportunity in terms of numbers, but then uh, it depends on how much effort that you're putting in, what is the return on investment that you're getting in. So for us, uh, I think it has been more international focus, uh, the, the national focus or 
uh, covering more uh, in local content is something that we have not looked up to as of now. Great. Uh, Inigo, um, in terms of uh, the growth in the in this particular sector, if you think about it, um, you know, where do you see the growth happening in terms of uh, uh, whether it is going to be tech or non-tech? What do you think is the trend um, um, of this industry from a global perspective? I think first of all, uh, the governments are going to play a key role, okay, in the in the growth of this uh, of this sector, okay. Um, they need to boost uh, some activities uh, for the entrepreneurs, okay, to give them support to develop new technologies, uh, to develop new capabilities in their products. And uh, at this stage, I think uh, the governments are going to to play a key role. Then uh, I think uh, in terms of the certain areas I, I mentioned uh, before, artificial intelligence and, and machine learning. But I think, uh, for example, the ones that you you were mentioning in terms of uh, sport organizations, like for example, martial arts, uh, uh, soccer. Uh, then cricket, okay. The the potential of uh, of these markets is uh, unstoppable, okay. Um, on on a global perspective, uh, I, for example, in in my experience, uh, I'm uh, I am, I'm experienced like for example, sports like table tennis are growing so fast in different regions in 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 the Asian Pacific market, and then probably in the next few years we will see more sports like like table tennis growing growing very fast. But in terms of uh, sports tech and solutions the, the governments are going to play a, a key role and they need to support the, the local entrepreneurs and nowadays even more because with this uh, pandemic the entrepreneurs and the and the small uh, enterprises has been affected a lot so uh, probably to run different uh, projects and initiatives to support the, the entrepreneurs and the startups are going to be uh, key to succeed Jitinder, uh, you are more focused on the fitness industry uh, more than sports um, in terms of, you know, the growth in this fitness sector, if you think about it, um, a lot of people uh, in India have still not taken up fitness. Um, but there are, if you take cricket, for example, you have the viewership which contributes to that whole storyline. But whereas fitness does not have that kind of a, a model where you can model everything around viewership, but instead you need to have physical people actually doing stuff in your portal, as an example. Um, you know, uh, how do you think that is going to affect your... Uh, your growth perspective, as well as where do you see yourself going from there? Look, uh, any industry grows where people can see opportunities in that industry. You know, people got uh, interested in cricket because they saw cricketers and stars living the life that they've always dreamt of. When you look at fitness industry, you don't have role models who you'd want to, uh, like, you know, look at and say, this is what I'm going to be. You know, someday, someday I'm going to become a gym trainer. Nobody dreams like that, you know, everybody dreams to become such a Tendulkar. So unless until you create these role models in an industry, the industry will not grow. It will always be largely unorganized. Now with Fitter, we have changed that, you know, most of our coaches make uh, north of $1,800 a month, which is six times what average trainers get paid in uh, India. And the top 6% of the trainers, they end up making five to $6,000, which is more than what uh, personal coaches make in the US. So with this changing, when the coaches themselves are becoming sort of an inspiration, this is driving a lot of uptake from people who want to become coaches on the platform. And so what is happening is you're not just getting fit. You have a potential high paying job and the, at the end of all of it, uh, we have 19 year old, we have 18 year old who are going back to their parents and telling dad, mom, I want to become a fitness coach with fit. So that's how an industry changes, you know, just because uh, you want to change the industry uh, just because you're providing a solution. You're not completing the ecosystem. The ecosystem gets completed when people aspire to be part of that industry. And that's why uh, fitness has not picked up, but that trend will change as more and more people come into fitness industry and become successful influencers. Great. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, sports and politics, you know, um, people always have this perception that uh, uh, India, in fact, I have this question for both Inigo as well as Ronak. Um, in terms of, you know, uh, is India more politically oriented for sports uh, than any other country for that matter? Uh, do you think uh, that uh, there, is a, there is an opportunity? Do you think that things have to change? You know, or do you think that uh, we're all doing fine? What is your opinion on that? So, uh, I mean, all I can say to that definitely is that, you know, uh, in before i mean let's say in the early 2000s and stuff like that it was it was a time when i mean there was a foundational growth in the country 
uh, ever since, I mean, in the last few years, maybe three to four years or even beyond that a little bit, we have sort of had what we call as the new India growth story. There is a real push from the government side and and you know it's it's of course and it's a valid question uh, people are not of course not a lot of people are aware of all the different initiatives and all the work that is being done behind the scenes in terms of promoting not just sports but overall the entire startup ecosystem which clearly can be seen in in the different developments over the last few months itself the honorable prime minister's uh, clarion call for atmanirbhar bharat sort of stands testament to that entire vision of you know self planned india and building up on building up on our our core competencies so i think moving forward this is probably the best time for our country that we have probably ever seen and i think for everybody out there it is time to put their foot on the gas and sort of leverage the opportunity now because i don't think there's ever been a better time for anybody to grow and the government is pushing for it and uh, there is sort of of course a lack of awareness for which we are there and we would like to bridge that gap and sort of just think about it in this perspective and i think um inigo would sort of agree with me on this portugal is a country with about 11 million 11 to 12 million in in a total population and they do have a cristiano ronaldo right we are sitting on a population of 1.3 billion right now and we are struggling to find 11 players making it the world cup stage but of course at a time like this when we're sort of leveraging and coming up and football like everybody mentioned is sort of the indian super league has come up we are growing i think soon enough we will see a lot of indian athletes compete at the world stage think about jamaica you have we have usain bolt which is a country with less than maybe 3 million in terms of a total population so I think give it time there is there is a big new india growth growth story being written and i think soon we should be seeing the results of that it go in terms of uh, startups and government support is in some cases are pretty critical i wouldn't say all cases but surely there is a huge uh, you know let's say a particular sport uh, a technology company focused on a specific sport or somebody that's coming over there uh, addressing a particular sport they would want to get the associations and the governments involved in certain ways to make them successful for that matter um, what is your take on how india is in comparison to the rest of the world i think uh, india as uh, as my colleagues uh, mentioned before they is pushing so hard this kind of initiatives uh, and well uh, this is a clear example organizing uh, supporting you to organize this event and, and and supporting the different local federations and so on but i think based on my experience um, we sh- we should um, take uh, follow the example of a different uh, governments such as uh, for example singapore okay in the, the government of singapore is supporting a lot the, the local entrepreneurs the local startups to develop the, their ideas and their products and and it's a it's a great approach okay to support those those organizations to to develop their products and to to grow on a global scale and and to support them to grow their business okay to connect with potential customers as well so i think uh, india is uh, following the right path and and in, it's uh, with the figures you can see that uh, well in terms of uh, investment Uh, in the eyes one of the leaders countries in terms of uh, sport tech investment and in the next few years uh, they, they will follow the same trend okay and even more i think uh, the potential of growth of uh, of india it's uh, quite massive and probably the government in the next few months or in the next few years are going to continue pushing these kind of initiatives and launching new programs for the startups to improve their solutions and to develop new products so i think um, it's uh, india is one of the greatest examples and probably in the next uh, few years could become one of the leaders in the industry. Hey, that's all the time we have right now. Thank you all uh, every one of you who have contributed to this particular session. It has been an awesome talking to each and every one of you. Uh thank you for taking the time and being a part of this. Uh we thank Fiki for putting this entire program together. It has been it has been a fantastic uh to have all of you with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.